And for some people, it's not getting any easier. It's been a roller coaster ride. And I always wonder about so many people uh, with special needs that were struggling prior to the pandemic. And we do know that this past year has been tough. So many people suffering from addiction, struggling to get help as well. And But there is help out there. That's the great thing about the community in which we live. And joining us now on the show, let's go ahead and bring in Lenora Hardy Foster. She is the CEO of the Judson Center. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much, both of you, Ronnie and Tyler, for giving me the opportunity this morning. You know, it's um, the Judson Center has been a part of our community, a much needed resource for so many people um, for decades now. But for those that may not be familiar with the work that you're doing over there, can you share your mission with us? Absolutely. You know, we're a nonprofit that was started back in 1924. So celebrating 97 years right now, and pretty soon we're going to hit that 100 year mark. And over the years, when we first opened the doors, we were providing orphanage services uh, for boys and girls. And we continue to expand, and we are probably one of the larger organizations in the state of Michigan that provides foster care and adoption and preservation programs for children. But in, in addition to that, over the many years, we continue to grow and expand. And today, we provide services to uh, adults that are disabled. Uh, we have an autism program, uh, behavior health, and something that happened recently back in 2019, we partnered with uh, MadNet One and brought primary health care into the behavior health practice. So you have a lot of things that your organization is juggling right now. Could have been you know, stressful prior to the pandemic, but walk us through this past year because it's been stressful for everyone. Have you seen a surge in the need for your services? Absolutely. There is a tremendous increase in the number of individuals, including children, adults, and families that are in need over this last year. We can understand even for us who may right now feel as though that we're living a pretty normal life. Uh, the pandemic has been stressful for us. So you can only imagine those that may have other challenges, uh, the increase in the need of services for them has just, it, it has increased. So we, we are here to provide those services. We see the increase in children in our autism program, the adults in our behavior health program, as well as children. And we've also, we've just added a substance use disorder program. So we are an SUD provider, and there's an increase in the number of individuals that are requiring those services as well. So on the back side of that, we know a lot of places are struggling getting employees and trained employees. Are you able to keep up uh, in that arena? You know, we worked very hard. When we were first, you know, when the pandemic uh, first hit all of us here in Michigan, there were things that we had never provided before. An example would be in the behavior health program, telehealth. You know, so my staff were not trained, nor did we have all of the necessary software and equipment. So we had to ramp up immediately. And I was so proud of the staff and my IT department that responded right away, made sure that we provided staff with all of the necessary tools that were needed so they could work remotely and still provide those much needed services. And even for those staff that had to come into the office, we are essential services. And there are some services that still require it face to face. And so we just went out of our way to make sure we could accommodate all of you know, the people that were in need and required our services. Lenora Hardy Foster with us here on the Megacast. She is the CEO for the Judson Center. And as you uh, stated, you started off um, with foster care and adoption. What has this been like for the kids that are in the foster care system? Uh, because are volunteers allowed to go in and help? We do have some volunteers that assist us. But it has been very challenging in that program over this past year because most of the services had to be done re remotely, you know, through uh, various uh, virtual platforms. And when necessary, we were able to go into the homes, but it's mostly all of the credentialed and licensed staff that would actually enter the homes. And so it had, it, it's a challenging foster care. Just here in the state of Michigan, there are over 13,000 children in the foster care system. Wow. 
And can you talk more about the foster care system? Um, it's, what is the process if someone wants to be a foster care uh, caregiver, I guess? Is that the word that you guys use in, in that arena? Uh, we're always looking for foster care parents. You know, so there's a whole recruitment process that we follow. We're always looking for individuals, you know, to participate as being a foster parent. And that's when we first start, even before we reach the adoption, because the number one thing is reunification, trying to make sure that we can reunite that child with the biological parents. So that is the first step. But probably one of the biggest challenges that we do have, and it's not just in Michigan, it is a national problem, and that is being able to recruit as many foster parents that are needed to accommodate the children. That's the reason over 13,000 are right now waiting on the list in foster care here in the state of Michigan. Wait, you have 13,000 waiting? 13, 000, over 13,000 in the state of Michigan. Wow. Are on the right waiting on the foster care list. They're waiting to be placed in a, in a home with, with foster parents. That's all a child wants. They want to feel loved. You know, they want to make sure that there's some stability in their lives. And what happens sometimes is with some of those children, not all of those children will end up hopefully being adopted by even foster parents or, or individuals that are seeking to to be adoptive parents. Right, and what's it been like with the system, um, like the court system as well, because uh, they're virtual and they're backed up as well, right? Exactly, so you know, with, with the court system, we still continue to, to move forward processing adoption cases, but we have to wait for the court. So that has been a delay with the court systems being closed uh, to really move the children much quicker through the adoption process, because we have to wait for the judge to sign off. Lenora Hardy Foster with us here on the Mega Cast. She is the CEO for the Judson Center. Uh, Lenora, I'm wondering, what is your day to day like? It seems like you're juggling so many issues that impact so many lives. We we really do, and you know, in Judson Center over these 97 years, we started in Oakland County, but we have offices in five counties. You know, so we are in Washtenaw, uh, we're in Genesee, Wayne County and Macomb County. So it has really been uh, very challenging this past year, you know, to really try to juggle all the many services that we're providing, especially during this pandemic, you know, but 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 here again, I, I'm just so proud of the staff and all the hard work and dedication that they have done to make sure that we can continue to provide quality service to all of the children and families that are in need. It's been a challenging year for so many nonprofit organizations. What is your budget looking like right now? So, you know, budgets for a nonprofit is always challenging. Uh, you know, you're not guaranteed you have a grant and you don't know if, if when we're going through these type of crises, if you're gonna lose uh, a grant, it may not be renewed. Uh, if you are not providing a service, you cannot bill to be reimbursed by Medicaid or through commercial insurance. So there's always many challenges, but you know what we do is we take a hard look at it. We do the best that we can in making sure that we can stay within the revenues that we anticipate to earn. But what has been the biggest challenge for us, being a nonprofit, you could be anywhere between 10 to 15% of your total annual, uh, annual operating budget is, is coming from uh, fundraising, philanthropy, uh, having events to raise money to help you close those gaps that you don't get enough money through grants to cover 100% of your costs. That has been the biggest challenge for us this past year, being able to sustain those dollars. Yeah, and, and so I know a lot of people have had to get creative. They've tried to do fundraising events via Zoom and virtual. Did you try that at all and did it work? Absolutely. Uh, this past year, we had two virtual uh, events. They were set up uh, using the Zoom platform. And I am just happy to say that we were very pleased with the outcome. Uh, they were successful. Not as We didn't raise as much money as what we have done when it is a in-person event, but we were very pleased with the people that supported those events. Uh, they participated on that Zoom platform and the donations did come in at an amount that we ourselves was able to say it was a very successful event. Lenore Hardy Foster with us here on the Mega Cash. She's with the Judson Center. You guys do so much amazing work over there, but it can be stressful as well. 
this past year, as we said, it's been challenging, but has there been a silver lining at all? Something that you think has been a benefit that you will take post-pandemic? Absolutely. Matter of fact, even matter of fact, when when the uh, pandemic uh, first began, we were notified uh, by SAMHSA that we were one of 18 um, organizations here in the state of Michigan that we did receive the CCBHC designation. It, that stands for the Certified Community Behavior Health Clinic. This is a program that our very own Senator Debbie Stabenow was very instrumental in being able to get that passed through Congress about five or six years ago. And so here it is, right? We're getting ready to start with the pandemic, but we received this exciting news that Judson Center was one of the 18 and it allows us to receive $2 million a year over a two year period. And that is to enhance our services within our behavior health program. The, the, the timing was perfect because it allowed us to do some things that we would have never been able to, to accomplish. So we're so proud of, proud of that uh, achievement. And because do you anticipate that um, even on the backside of this, as we start to get vaccinated and get back to life, the mental health impact of the pandemic may linger with us for years to come? It, you know, that very well could be for a while, uh, especially as we see the increase in the number of people that need these services. One of the biggest concerns that we do have here in the state of Michigan, as well as other states, is being able to recruit uh, staff with the credentials to provide those services. There is a shortage. There is a shortage in finding uh, licensed social workers uh, that could provide those services. So we know that that's a challenge that we're dealing with. Right now, there's a waiting list here in the state of Michigan of individuals that, that need and require those services. Wow, that's so sad to think about. Um, but it can be emotionally draining for an individual to work uh, in your industry. I know that I had a girlfriend who went to work for social work. Um, she you know, went into the industry for like a year or two, and then she just couldn't handle it emotionally and ended up getting out of the, out of the arena. Absolutely, and that does happen. And think about during the pandemic too, that was already enough stress. And when you're dealing with providing these types of services, there are many challenges, it's very stressful. And so we're always doing everything that we can to be there and support our staff, you know, to help them during these challenging times. But also there, there are times that there's a lot of good that comes out of the work that we're doing. Uh, we, we are so happy about a partnership that we've been able to, to create uh, with the Salvation Army, their Harbor Light program uh, that's located in Clinton Township out in Macomb County. And so we're able to work with them and bring medical services into their facility and also to assist them on the behavior health side as well. So there's some good that is coming out of this. And then we, we think about all our other programs, autism. Autism is a program right now when you think about children and, and today there's one in 54 children being diagnosed with autism. And April is the month that we that we recognize autism. We say light it up blue. And so so there there is good that's still going on. And uh, that is a that, that's a big event that will take place uh, during the month of April. Just trying to raise awareness with everyone to just let them know, you know, light it up blue uh, in, in recognition of children right now that are diagnosed with autism. One in 54. That's uh, an alarming number. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and that has happened over the last couple of years. A few years ago, it was like one in 60. And so so the number is not getting better. It's not going in the direction that we would like for it to. So for some of the families that are struggling right now, because we do know, especially with, you know, schools and classrooms, it's, it can be hard for a, a person, you know, a child with additional needs, such as, you know, if they're autistic, for them to try to learn through a computer screen. So what are some of the services that parents can reach out to your center to try to get help with? So one of the things with our autism, our autism programs are all face-to-face. -face. So the children are back at at all of the sites. We have four separate locations for autism. Back during the pandemic, when most of our staff were working remotely, the services that we were providing at that time for the uh, autism families was more parent education, 
that was probably the best that we could do using any type of virtual platform. But immediately when things uh, got a little better and we were able to reopen, all of the autism children are back. So it is face to face and they are very excited to be back you know, to, to work with the team that works with them. And we're happy to have all the children, you know, back at each of those locations. Lenore Hardy Foster with us here on the Mega Cash. She's with the Judson Center. With that, um, where can people find more information about the work that you and your staff are doing, or also maybe if they want to donate? Yes, please feel free to visit our website at www.judsoncenter.org. Well, we so appreciate your time and thank you for all the work that you're doing as well. Thank you so very much. Thank you.